Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat. In this session, we would look at adjustments and closing for merchandising operation. Now, all the adjustments that you learn about from the previous chapter, such as prepaid adjustments, unearned revenue, accrued expenses, and accrued revenue, still apply still applies to merchandising operation. The only difference is now we have an inventory account and we might have to make an adjustment. So basically we're gonna look at one adjustment, but all the other adjustments would still apply. Also the closing process that you learned about, the four steps, close revenue to income summary, close expenses to income summary, close income summary to retained earnings and close dividend to retained earnings, that still applies for merchandising operation, except we have some a few new accounts we would look at shortly. This topic is covered in a financial introductory course, also covered on the CPA exam, the FAR section. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,600 plus accounting, auditing, finance, and tax lectures. This is a list of all the courses that I cover, including CPA questions. If you like my lectures, please like them, click on the like button, share them, put them in playlists, let the world know about them. If they benefit you, if they're benefiting you, it means they might benefit other people. And please connect with me on Instagram. On my website, you will have access to additional resources. So if you are studying for your CPA exam and you would like to supplement your accounting education, please visit my website. So adjusting entries for merchandisers. Again, as I said, all the previous adjustments still apply, except now we're gonna have a new account called inventory. Now what happened to inventory is this. Sometime we're gonna have something called shrinkage. Now what is a shrinkage? Shrinkage is a fancy word for loss of inventory, theft, obsolescence. Basically the inventory either it's no good or it went missing. So what we need to do, we need to count our inventory and when we count the inventory, we need to inspect the inventory to make sure it's there, still in saleable condition. If, if it's not there, we need to write it down and make the proper adjusting. And assume inventory general re ledger record shows a balance of 2,250. A physical count of inventory determines inventory on hand is 2,000. Now we're looking at the computer system, it's showing 2,250. When we did the actual physical count, we noticed that we only have 2,000 worth of merchandise. What does that mean? It means 250 went missing. What does that mean? It means we have to record an adjusting entry to reduce the inventory and to book that loss, to record that loss. Therefore, we debit cost of goods sold, we credit merchandise inventory. Now, in some textbook, well, what they will do, rather than debiting cost of goods sold, they debit a loss account, loss due to shrinkage. Okay, then they close this account to cost of goods sold. Here we are updating cost of goods sold directly. Therefore, we, we debit cost of goods sold. So that's just kind of show you the, the other steps. If we debit loss due to shrinkage, if we did so, at the end of the year, which is this is the end of the year, but let's assume we did so earlier, what we do is we debit cost of goods sold and we credit loss due to shrinkage. Now what we are assuming here is shrinkage is part of cost of goods sold. Now if shrinkage is a large item on the income statement and we want the users to see this information then we do keep loss due to shrinkage as a separate line. But generally speaking loss due to shrinkage it cannot be large it cannot be material otherwise if, we, if think about it if, if loss to, due to shrinkage is a material amount you might go out of business if you keep losing your inventory therefore most companies they either debit cost of goods sold and if they do debit loss due to shrinkage eventually they will close this account to cost of goods sold simply put we lost that inventory without generating any sales because the key is every time you make this entry debit cost of goods sold credit merchandise inventory you want to debit account receivable and credit sales for like 700 you want you know to record the sale here there's no sale just the we're recording the cost the expense without recording any sale so that's not really that's not really good and you might think you might think like what is 250 dollars um, just to tell you how important from a, from a numeric, numeric, numerical perspective, those losses for certain company. Just to give you an example, for example, Amazon, Amazon, their net profit margin, and I'm going to be generous. I'm going to be generous and I'm going to tell you it's going to be, I don't know, um, 
let's make it 1.5%, which is not 1.5%, it's less, but I'm gonna be generous. So let's assume Amazon as a company lost $250 worth of inventory. How much is that? What is the, how much sales do they have to make to make up this loss? Well, here's what we do. You'll take 250, $250 and divide it by 0 0.015, and they will need to make 16,000, $666 in sales to make the profit of 250 to make up the loss of the 250 in inventory. So simply put, they will need to they will need to uh, have sales of 16,666 and based on these sales they will make a profit of 1.5 and that 1.5 will give them a profit of 250. This profit would replace the inventory for 250. So what I'm trying to say is losing inventory is an extremely um, costly mistake for uh, for merchandisers and that's why they implement internal control that's why they implement security procedures to make sure their inventory is protected now in addition to the adjusting we the, the the merchandising companies just like any other company they go through the closing process they have closing entries and the closing entries are the same for all the for the service company first thing is we close sales to income summary so assuming this company has three hundred twenty one thousand dollars in sales we debit sales credit credit income summary step two is we debit all temporary and we debit close debit balances in all temporary account to income summary. What are we talking about here? We're talking about expenses, cost of goods sold, sales return, sales discount. So here what we do is we credit all the expenses, including what we introduce in this, uh, in this company is sales discount, which is a contra revenue, sales returns and allowances, which is a contra revenue, and cost of goods sold, which is an expense account. So we, cl we close all these accounts to income summary. Now, the difference between 308 in income summary and 321 in income summary is net income. So both of these accounts were transferred to income summary. So simply put, income summary, we have a credit balance of 321 and a debit balance of 308,100. The difference between them is 19,000, I'm sorry, 12,200, 12,000, 900 not 200 so step three is to debit income summary 12,900 to close it we debit income summary then we credit retained earning we transfer the balance to retained earning and the last step if you have any dividend you close your dividend to retained earning so no surprises here nothing new everything is basically the same this is the closing process the four steps if you have any questions, please let me know. If you like my recording, please click on the like button. As always, I would like to invite you to remind you that please visit my website if you are looking for additional resources, especially if you're studying for your CPA exam. If you need those five extra five to seven points, I might be able to help you get those points to pass your exam. Study hard, and I'm always here to help you. Good luck.